Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over data wrangling and data munging in Python. I'm pretty much going to be using only one library and that's Pandas. That's pretty much all you really need to know. But when it comes to wrangling and munging, if you want to know a little bit more about that particular subject area, make sure you check out my other video, which I did wrangling and munging in RStudio. I go a little bit more into depth as to what that is and what that can do for you. So without further ado, let's go and see what munging and wrangling can do for us in Python. Okay, so everything in this particular notebook that I have loaded up over here, wrangle munging, I've included all the probably the most important function that I use on a day-to-day -day basis if I'm using Python when it comes to wrangling and munging my data so that my data is nice and sparkling clean. I've included all the various functions that are most popular and probably the most widely used when you're going to be doing like an exploratory data analysis or um, clean your data so that it's machine learning trainable. Also note that I'm not going over the joins, the various joins like left join, inner join, outer join, full outer join, right join, etc. Uh, that's like in a video on its own, but if you are going to be doing a joining process, you should probably do it in SQL a lot more effective, especially when the data is from a database and not on your local machine. So we won't be going over about that in this particular video. So data sets in use over here, I'm going to be using the abalone data set. It's a very popular machine learning uh, data set to use and we'll be seeing that real quick. So I just went to this link I downloaded it and I just put this in the current directory so I can load it in and First things first when you are reading in data first you want to see if there's any null values So this is a really neat function. It checks out if there's any null uh, Values of it you can use a sum function on top of that to see how many null values are actually existing in each of these features we have over here. That's probably the first thing you should do right there. So if you want to actually go through the one hot encoding process, which is really popular when we are training our machine learning model and we have a bunch of categorical variables and we don't want any ordering involved between the features of categorical variables, this is what it's gonna look like. So we have the we have a type uh, type feature over here we have male female and i i still don't know what i is as uh, it's some gender related to an abalone so if you do know what that is make sure you comment on what that is but yeah over here uh, i just went ahead and i just removed the first column you can just use the i lock which is by image or by index and you can just index it by uh, the rows and columns, this represents all the rows, and then this represents the first column on over, and uh, be type all the way to rings. It, it, Python works on zero to infinity, so the very first value will be zero, so um, that's why it skipped the very first one here. Nonetheless, utilizing the uh, get dummies uh, function within pandas very useful all you do is just call this on your particular function over here and you call it on your type and you know that well we know that the type variable is a categorical variable or an object which is a pretty much like a string so you got male females and i and that's what it did over here we have three separate columns so if we want to utilize this all we do is just we just concatenate our results over here so we get our dummies which is over here you can concatenate this data frame to the rest of the data set note that we actually re-removed the type variable over here and this is the entire data set that we can then plug into a machine learning algorithm and you know in this case the dependent variable would be rings checking out how old abalone is based on the ring count Okay, so we have also the string and the summary functions in Python, uh, which is the exact replicate of the RStudio ones, but there's a little bit more information that we can derive from these functions. So running the abalone one hot data frame that we have over here, we would essentially get the exact same thing uh, in RStudio, but the data types are a little bit different in Python. It does it by objects and unsigned integers, as we see over here, eight bytes and 64 bytes for 60, uh, for floats. And we have, you know, um, telling us whether or not that particular feature has any null observations within each of these columns and really cool part over here is that it tells you how much memory there is over here on the output instead of looking at the right hand side of our studio uh, it just pretty much gives it to you right here so really really cool stuff in fact this probably be the very first thing that you should run when you are working with that data similar to the summary function that we saw in r this gives you the various statistics related to each of your columns 
Uh, so we have your counts, you got your mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, so on and so forth. So when we are moving on to the apply family, the apply family is not as extensive in Python as it is in R because there's other various ways, other built-in functions that we could utilize to do the exact same thing. But there should be pretty much like three functions that you should be aware of when you are working with the apply family. And that is apply map, apply and map over here. And they are very similar to each other. Um, um, except that you would use apply map by and it would do it by element wise uh, functions or elements in a data frame whereas apply works on rows or columns either or it runs a function on rows or columns and it works on series and data frames and map works on series so that's pretty much the only thing that's different it just applies a function on you know a given uh, data structure and it will ideally just run the function on each of those elements over here. So then I'm gonna be running over here. So we see the data frame, we apply map. In this case, I'm converting or casting all of my features into a string. And in this case, the string objects, the data type is an object within the overall grand scheme of things, which was successful actually, because all of our stuff was originally an integer or a float. And this is what it looks like. Pretty much the exact same thing because we just converted everything to a string. So it's in the string formats, but these are technically numbers and we can go back and forth. Okay, and arguably the most important features you should be aware of is the filtering functions or the ways that we would subset data within data frames. So in this case, if we want to get the longest shell, see if the longest shell values are greater than 0 0.3 and the diameter is less than 0 0.3 over here all you would do is that you would just plug in those particular functions or those uh, boolean values over here and see if it actually matches up and voila this actually yeah matched it up 0 0.3 for the longest shell all of them should be greater and everything should be less than uh, the diameter diameter and also note that you should be confused in terms of the string objects because i did save that into a different uh, data frame. So this is the original data set that we are working with. We didn't have any one high encodings over here. So uh, I want to make that clear. Uh, next part is that if you want a subset, basically, you know, just extract all the observations that are, you know, male. That's pretty much all you do. You have to call the data frame and then the data frame uh, to see if that particular column values are equal to that particular condition over here. And then you can do a variety of functions. So you can run this uh, for the specific type. Uh, if you want to see if a particular, uh, like a particular column even contains a particular string, this can return a Boolean value. In this case, none of my observations have MF in them, which is a string on itself. We only has M, I, and uh, F and let's move on over, over to here. So you can even see, you can, you know, plug in double conditions, um, to see if you can pull, you know, male and female, if there is such observations that we have over here. In this case, this doesn't make any sense because male and female, you know, you can't have two objects within one, inch, one within the one column. So that's why nothing's returning. But if you use the or operator over here, you can get male and female. So really, really cool stuff over here. And of course, if you don't want any males, then you just use the bang operator and you would pretty much get females and I over there. So that's pretty much all you really need to know about these the subsetting stuff. So if you really want to extract uh, specific values, you can just create it within a list. Right, so list of compare. So I want only males and M values to be a part of my filter data set. So I'll usually go through the route of masks of where I essentially just go through and calculate Boolean values to see if it's a true or a false statement. So in this case, I'm getting the column and I'm checking to see if any features or any of the rows within this column is in this particular list. In this case, we only want males because uh, this double checks to see if the, the M value is inside of this list over here. And that returns a Boolean value. And if we were to run the the uh, original data set on the original mask observations, it essentially just gets the uh, true values for that particular row and it returns 
those values so you can make this list a lot more extensive if there's really specific objects that you want to extract from your feature that is the way to do it and i think that's probably the most clear-cut way of doing so in terms of a script process okay so once you are familiar with you know just subsetting data what happens if you want to aggregate data and extract some form of value outside of that Really easy. So we have the abalone data set and you can just group by the type. In this case, we have M, I, and F. And we just want to run the mean function on top. So we should get pretty much a, co a column mean based on each of the features that we are given within that particular feature. In this case, it'll be type. So it groups all of the same shared values. In this case, all the females, all the eyes and all the males into one particular group and it calculates the mean on top of that so really powerful especially when you're going through the exploratory data analysis piece and as we can see if we just you know run the group by function we're just getting get a gen uh, generic data frame object where you have to run functions on top like some for that matter that's a group by function very useful and of course, when you are extracting specific columns, uh, the way to do that is that you just call the data set and then just call the specific features that you want to extract from the data set over here. And in this case, it'll be type, um, longest shell, and rings. And of course, you could flip the order. It really doesn't matter how you would do it as long as the columns actually do exist over here. And that's how you would extract those columns. Okay, so moving on over here. So based on our earlier results, we can also go and head and sort the rings. So we have like an ascending or descending order. And you can do this with a variety of you know ascending or descending based on the particular columns that you have. But you can just change this to false and I'm already sorting by rings. And let's go back to the original data set of Abalone and start from there. If you want to mutate um, some features, they'll... The way to do that is that you create a new column. You just name it something differently. And then you call your original data set. And then you calculate some, um, some multiplication or, you know, some PEMDAS function on your original data set for your features and columns. You run that and this is going to be your original, all your new data set where we have rings times shell weights which is that. So really cool, really easy ways to actually mutate your particular data. Not a lot of, you know, typing. Really, really cool. And pretty much one of the other functions I usually go for is to drop the duplicates or finding unique values. So really, really powerful over here. And it's really simple. Um, I don't think in R there's like a really good way to do Oh yeah, there's a unique function in R. So you can do that here there so note that within my original data set there's no duplicate rows so i went ahead and i just created some dummy data where we have you know abc and we for the features and we have zeros for all of the row values so in this case if we want to drop the duplicates it only gets one representation of that particular row as a representation of the entire data sets okay so that pretty much sums up what data wrangling and munging is in python i'm so glad that you made it to the end of this video and i hope to see you in my next video, thank you so much for watching.